in the evolution of multi-track, when four-track had been pretty well established, there were no four-channel mixers to be had. And if you go back a few years, you would see that early stereo, there was a mixer for the left channel and another mixer for the right channel. So it was one way or the other. Well, at some point, pan pots and left, center, right switches and whatnot came into the picture. At the time that four track was getting established, if you had to have some way of monitoring the four tracks to make sure it would make a mixable product. So we had this line of rack mount units that would be eight in, two out, or eight in, four out, or eight in, eight out, or a single eight in, one out for sends. And you could sort of create a mixing system out of these these rack mountable modules they used um, we had the power transformers mounted off the uh, main frame in a, in a group where you, you'd have 10 or 12 power transformers and the power up to the modules is 34 volt center tap and the point was that you could get all the magnetic fields away from the audio and get the heat away from it and etc it turned out to be a pretty uh, workable thing and then in 1969, we developed a 8-in, 2-out portable mixer with a, a, a mono send, solo buttons, a stereo monitor system with some external inputs that fed a rotary switch so you could have a pair of two tracks, this machine, some kind of echo device if you wanted, as a, as a remote package. And we built 35 or so of those. It was called the SS3. It was the first, one of the very first products that I ever saw in which all of the major active circuitry was on a motherboard. And in this case, there were two motherboards, one with the mic preamps and the other with the outboard hardware. It used uh, the API modular discrete op amp. There were 15 op amps in this for eight in, send, two out, and a stereo monitor package. And it would clip at about plus 30 into 600 ohms. And they're still in use. They sell right now for more than they did new.